Hey everyone, I'm going to be diving into a video looking at science and Islam and the Quran. Are they saying the exact same things? When I got older, I heard scientists had found evidence of the Big Bang. According to that theory, the entire universe burst out of a single point in an instant of fiery creation. Right. And now that science knows so much about our cosmic origins, what place is there for religious belief in the beginning? Mm. I want to know about the Islamic story of creation, so I'm going to Cairo. Islam has deep roots in science. Muslim astronomers were charting the heavens soon after the time of Muhammad. Speak to me about the, the Islamic concept of creation. In Islam, the beginning of the story starts with this massive cloud of smoke, from which the heaven and earth are pulled from inside the smoke. And then the earth after that gets formed into what it looks like uh, before the beings are created. Interestingly, that is very cosmic. Right. In Islam, the moment of creation exists alongside the scientific view of Earth's formation. Let's see what other similarities are there. I think it's going to be a good one, guys. This is not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can they see? In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. And he split them asunder. Split them apart. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which Kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no. What can the poor man understand? But well, what did he know about the universe, about the creation of the heavens and the earth? What did he know? He only accepted whatever was said. If this was Allah's kalam, amanna saddakna. We hear and we accept. We believe. This was Iman that they had. They didn't have a grasp. Allah is not addressing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad, sorry, or the unbelievers in the Congo, or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. That these astronomers with the mighty telescopes, when they're looking into space, and they're analyzing the, the movements in the heavens. Such a person with his great learning, he says that this universe came into being with a big bang billions of years ago. Because he's watching the universe and he's noticing that these heavenly bodies are receding from a central place somewhere. Is all going out in all directions, moving away, away, away. Like a balloon. When you blow it gets bigger and bigger, something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they're receding from us at a faster and faster speed. At a faster and faster speed. So they say that this universe came into being with a big bang. A big bang theory. Who says that? The most learned men of science, astronomers. They say, hey, where do you get these funny ideas from? Mm. This fairy tale. This but fairy tale. So no, 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 no. It is not fairy tale. These are facts. Demonstrable facts. We can demonstrate it, show you what is happening. And from that we can conclude if we had a film and put in reverse gear, so we could see what is happening is all coming back again. The way it's going out, the balloon, if we can deflate it, you'll see it all coming back to one central point. Mm -hmm. And there was a big bang. When did you discover this? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. What is 50 years? Nothing. As an, an illiterate man in the desert, a person who didn't know how to read or write, a person who couldn't sign his own name, 
he could have, couldn't have known this, could he? He says, no, never. Impossible. Man doesn't know astronomy. He hasn't got the instruments. He hasn't got a telescope. Nothing. In the desert. And among an Ummi people, illiterate people. And he is now telling you, this man in the desert, 1,400 years ago, and he split them asunder. And you biologists, people who study minute life, microplotism, the amoeba, he says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. And they tell you, so look, we look back in time, in space, he says, look, this is how life originated. There was a time when this earth was a molten mass. Nothing could have survived here. Everything boiling, boiling. And over a period of billions of years, you know, the vapors went up and came down, and the vapors went up and came down and started cooling this earth. It took a billions of years. And then started life, germ, plant life, and all these things started. At one time, there was nothing. And then it started. Where did life come from? He says, from the sea. Certain chemical action, the sun playing its part, and life started from there. Mm -hmm. When did you find this out? It's yesterday. Yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. An illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known that, could he? He says, no, never. So well, listen. So, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And he has made from water every living thing. That's yeah, pretty interesting how uh, Ahmed so, could you mean, know that information you, you back then. Believe. Who? You, men of science, you, men of learning, you kafir, you atheist, you agnostic, why can't you believe? Then there's of course the famous ayah about the heavens and the earth, which is the Arabic expression for the universe, heavens and the earth. Kanata ratqan. The word ratqan in Arabic means something that is fused and inseparable. Oh, okay. Fused and inseparable. The word ratq was used when a mother is carrying a child because the mother and the child are fused inseparable. and inseparable. And when she would start delivering, the other was, word was used, fataqa. Fataqa is the part, the time for her to start parting. Literally, her body is parting up and she's parting from her child. So the ayah says the heavens and the earth used to be fused and inseparable and then we caused them to come apart. Meaning, there was the universe in the, in origin in original in its original form was a fused united body some sort of matter and then it became and spread out and then the words used later on it spread out far and wide so it's close to very close to uh, interestingly close to the big bang theory hmm. uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the beginning of the heavens as if that is not enough look at the frontier project of nasa right now they're looking for a sign of life on mars spending about probably close to a billion dollars uh, 600 billion dollars on it or going going one trillion dollar what are they looking for as a sign of life are they looking for emails furniture you know they're looking for water water yeah. because you find water you're gonna find life the same verse in surat al anbiya chapter 21 that told us how the universe started is telling us what is the source of life in the universe the continuation of it and out of water we have created every living thing how would prophet Muhammad know that mm -hmm. and as if that is not enough you go to surat fusilla chapter 41 the scientists would tell you that massive explosion the stars and the planets did not come out like that it was in the condition of smoke huge light years areas of smoke and then it got so intense inside it that the stars are born and the planets are born and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settled to the heavens when it was in a condition of smoke and said to it and to earth come they said we come willingly how would anyone imagine that you know the hills and the camels and the, the planet were smoke but if it is the creator of heavens and earth then and that is being revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallam, then you know it and then the third phase, just recently, scientists discovered that that Big Bang is still happening. That explosion, the edges of the universe are still, still equaling and expanding okay. at the edges of the universe. In Surah al variyat chapter 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بَأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ 
and the skies, the heavens, we have created with our own powers and we are expanding them. Mm. This is the creator talk. Creator 1400 the Quran. years ago in the Quran. And then subhanAllah the Quran is Surah 51 verse 47. Mm -hmm. okay, next speaker here. As for the, uh, the sky or the heavens, uh, we have created it, we have built it, and we are expanding it. Uh, so this, this uh, seems to be very clear that God here is, uh, is doing the work. He is uh, the active participle here, Musi, we, we are expanding it. In fact, I may add here, if you allow me, that uh, uh, some of the classical commentators were puzzled by the verse. And uh, they said, well, it, it just means that it is large or that mm. God is uh, filling it with more provisions. No, God's actively expanding. Because they couldn't conceive that the universe is expanding fast as it is already. Uh, so they avoided the obvious meaning. But as Maurice Bouquet has uh, shown in his book, The Bible, Quran and Science, uh, that is the literal meaning, uh, and that literal meaning actually makes sense to us today because we know today that the universe is expanding since the 1930, 1920s. Uh, this was discovered and it became a firm theory uh, and since 1964 uh, with the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation uh, because that proved uh, once and for all that the universe is in fact expanding uh, from a Big Bang origin that occurred some maybe 14 uh, million years ago. Mm. Just a few decades ago, there was a conflict between our theology as Muslims and physics. Physicists believed in the steady state theory. They believed that the universe had no beginning. And in the Quran, it's clear the universe had a beginning. Now, the steady state theory has gone through a paradigm shift, and we have the Big Bang theory now with 17 different models. And it's more in line with the Quran. But what would we as Muslims have done 50, 70, 80 years ago when the steady state theory was accepted by everyone, including people like Einstein? Would we just go around trying to argue with every single physicist that is wrong? No. We would say, well, this is a prevailing idea in physics and we accept it as Muslims and we accept it as a working model, working theory, working paradigm. But we don't believe it to be absolutely true. Maybe something will come in the future which will challenge it, right. which is actually what happened. The correct thing Islamically and the correct thing, even if you're not Muslim, is to understand science only gives you working models which can then change. And we need to understand we have a duty to be involved in science more than I would say other religious faiths or even people who are non-religious. Why? Because science as a method came from the Muslim world. The first scientist in history, according to even mainstream secular academics, historians like David C. Limburg, the first scientist in history and the first person who came up with the scientific method which we're using till today to make all of our technology is Hassan ibn Haytham, who lived approximately a thousand years ago, hundreds of years before Francis Bacon or Galileo or any of these characters. And he was not only a scientist, he was also a Quranic scholar. And he was the first person who actually, uh, and one of the things that he said was, in his biography, what drove him to do science was to become closer to Allah, become closer to God. That was actually his objective. And sadly, nowadays, science is associated with moving atheism. away. Yeah, moving away from God. Yeah. But as we know, the more you discover about something, the more you discover about the human body, the more you discover about the universe. If anything, it should lead you towards God, not away from God. Science explains how. God explains for us why anything exists in the first place. So discovering how doesn't challenge why. Okay, that was a pretty deep video. You know, we looked at uh, different aspects of science and how it relates to uh, the Islamic teachings in the Quran. And it's pretty surprising just looking and saying, okay, well, where would this information have come from when the words of the Quran were being recited and then later on they were added down and written on paper but when that was happening it's like where was that information coming from you know to the people uh, through Muhammad in the desert in Arabia where would they have learned that stuff from you know so I find that a, a very fascinating uh, question and uh, it's something that really fuels my interest in diving more and exploring Islam a bit more because 
people, yes, the association of religion and science, it's like, oh no, you can't be religious and be scientific because science disproves religion, religion disproves science and whatnot, religion isn't scientific. Not necessarily so, that's one view, that's one way to look at it, uh, based on your understandings of science and religion. But in Islam, there is a lot of talk about exploring science, and I've heard and you've probably heard as well too, the phrase, the Quran is not a book of science, it's a book of signs. And as you examine those signs, you discover scientific models and scientific uh, theories and scientific facts eventually. And you're like, whoa, that's interesting. Well, what else is there, you know? So that's sort of uh, my attitude and my feeling as I explore. And uh, I'm starting to see more and more now of like, okay, well, uh, there's, there's got to be more to this whole Quran thing than just some random text that's just there talking about nothing. You know, there's got to be something behind it, you know? And yeah, it's a book that is fascinating people all over the world, all walks of life, science, physicists, historians, you know, it, it, it's just, there's just something about it like, wow, okay, well, maybe there's more to it than people originally thought. So that's where I'm at, guys. And uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts about this video. Sound off down below. Thanks for hanging out with me in another episode and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.